What is solo leveling the most hype power fantasy anime coming out next year? That's right, January, winter 2024. We're getting solo leveling. Now, I don't think this is spoilers. Any news is usually very, very spoiler free. Let's learn what solo leveling is about. When it comes to a series where the main character's overpowered, very few. I think I noticed a couple there, right? Look at when this. When it comes to a series where the main. Overlord, Sword Art Online. Don't know this one. Do you guys want to watch this one? This is this looks like another one that's going to be fun, There's right? Eminence in Shadow, Slime. Very few actually portrayed in a way that's entertaining. Mm. You have shows like the bargain bin isekai in which power is just magically granted, then it's <laughs> after that. Wait, 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 wait. This is, um, I got a cheap skill in another world. It's, it's, it's oh, I, there's a lot of fun times, but, uh, bro, this show is like the epitome of just like, the, like, main character, just like, fat, ugly, virgin, weak dude, but he's actually a really kind person, becomes super jacked, handsome, and everybody just like orgasms looking at him. That's that's this show. Then it's after that that every conflict becomes extremely trivialized. Yeah. Sure, the character's strong and there's plenty of flexing, but when everything else literally doesn't matter because of it, that's when a power fantasy starts to become boring in my opinion. Straight up, there's like no threat. You know, at a certain point, it loses that wow factor. If you don't do the power scaling correctly in shows like this, it's not hype anymore because you, you just anticipate, oh, main character's going to show up. It's going to beat everything. Boring. You know how to avoid this? One Punch Man and Eminence in Shadow has it figured out. Focus on the side characters. Focus on everyone but the main character. Build them up. Make it super immersive. Make them feel the threat of an enemy opponent so that you think that you're actually endangered. Even though in the back of your mind, you know, at the end, Saitama or Shadow's going to show up. One shot everything. It's going to be hype. This formula works extremely well. Then we have shows like Eminence and Shadows, Slime and Overlord, where yeah. despite the character being the strongest or pretty much close to the strongest, there's all these other events going on that make that power a secondary element. Mm. For Eminence and Shadow, it's Sid's oblivious influence on everything. For Slime, it's Rimuru's people and their presence as an independent nation. Then for Overlord, it's Nazarick and their pursuit of world domination. Overlord and Slime promise you guys it's gonna be the reactions are gonna start dude mahoka dxd as soon as these series are done we're getting on to these two guys don't worry all things that are assisted by the main protagonist's overwhelming power but at the end of the day it's really just this complementary tool used to assist in the building of the plot world and characters so while yes being powerful is one of the defining traits of the series it's certainly not the end all be all for it and it's that defining aspect of a good power fantasy versus a bad power fantasy that I think so. He keeps. I guess he really didn't watch this song. He keeps shitting on this show. Versus a bad power. <laughs> he keeps shitting on this show. Okay, like, do you see this right now? Do you see the girls in the corner? They're like, oh. But it's not just the girls that's like, oh my god, he's so hot. That's what's that. That's literally what they're saying. Oh my god, he's so hot. Look at this salary man. What does this 36 year old salary man have any interest in this fucking like 15 year old boy walking in the street? Salary men break their neck looking at this guy thinking, oh my god, he's so handsome. You know what? The moments like this was a lot more fun in this show. You would say, actually, this is what the show was good at. Dumb moments like this was much better than the random CGI fighting in this show. Dumb moments like this where everyone's popping about how handsome, how cool he looks. Those, that's exactly why I watched this show for. Our fantasy that I think solo leveling might do the best out of anyone. Oh. What is this solo leveling, you might ask? Well, Memcho. Memcho just got a homage right there. Did you see it, guys? What is this solo leveling, you might ask? Memcho. I think solo leveling, I mean, the title is literally solo leveling. You're just leveling right from the trailers we watched i think there's like a bunch of like dungeons or like monsters that you like farm i i think so the main characters probably starts off weak i mean we saw like in solo leveling there's like two guys right there's this like level one you know gang member looking at dude who's just complete mob just side character a character that sid wishes he could be and then you got this guy who's like like Six foot two, super jacked, fucking straight out of a Korean drama webtoon looking guy. I Who are these two? Probably the same person after a power up. I think there's going to be a transformation scene. I think that he's going to be powering up solo leveling and then he somehow becomes like taller and more handsome and people are like, oh my God, who is this guy type of deal? Maybe. Well, that's what we're going to talk about here. A series well known across the globe. Look at this shit. Dude, it looks so good. Well, for how exciting it is that in only a few weeks. Yeah, right here, right here. Level one mob member. This is the job. This is the jobber. But then this guy's clearly not the same, right? He looks different. 
this will be premiering its anime. See? This guy looks totally different. His like facial structure, it's more sleek. He's just taller. Look at him. It's also the show I'll be covering every week on this channel come January. Boy, do I love it when I cover an anime if that any news is also gonna cover, bro. We gonna be farming them. Now, I know solo leveling is right around the corner, but mm -hmm. allow me to introduce you to some other system-based novels just like it. Just like Hashtag ad incoming, I think. How Song jin -woo used his to become overwhelmingly powerful. The protagonists of all these do exactly the same. Never mind. So, where can you read all these amazing novels? No, I do it! Hashtag ad! Not Raid Shadow Legends, but a Webtoon sponsor? Let's see it. Novels. Well, with today's sponsor being Web Novel, all you gotta do is. This guy, how does he get so many? I mean, it makes sense. He has a 619k channel, which like it gets like hundreds of thousands of views on average per video. It makes a lot of sense why brands would want to sponsor with them. That's actually so cool. But yeah, go use your fucking, you know, your your code, sure discount code, any news. And link in description, guys. Go, go, go. Download Web Novel today. After which, all you gotta do is just search for. The yeah, video. yeah, yeah, what yeah. What started out as an unpublished novel back in 2014 was later serialized onto the South Korean platform Kakao Pay. Na Honjaman. This is the name. It's not really solo. Oh, it's Na Honjaman Level Up. This basically means like I only I level up by myself. Which then quickly into a webtoon only. Or actually, it's not I only. I, I actually no no no. Na Honjaman Level Up means like I I don't level up by myself. It's like only I can level up. Pretty much. Into a webtoon only two years. Does that matter? Only I can level up? Implying that the level system is unique to him? I don't know. That, that's not the Korean direct translation is, though. Later, it had become this digital comic that would rapidly expand across the world. Look at this art! From Korea to Japan, then soon after North mm -hmm. America. Solo leveling had become this global phenomenon that would garner millions of readers daily. It had become one of, if not the most popular manhwa ever. This is like the webtoon, right? This and Tower of God and I think even like high school, not high school DxD, but what was that? What, what, what was that high school anime that came out? Remember that show where I think Mori was this? Mo I fuck, I forgot their names. But there's another high school uh, style like combat based webtoon though. And like there, there's a lot of famous webtoon. God of High School, you're right, Cody. But like, yeah, these series, they're on the rise, man. And it's cool to see more webtoons get like put into anime. Now, what is it that makes solo leveling so popular? Well, I don't think it's because the it's arts? a literary masterpiece that's perfect in every aspect. But what I do think is that it delivers on exactly what it sets out to do. The power fantasy. Just that sheer raw feeling of like a power gap. Someone becoming so fucking strong and being able to flex on people is what I'm anticipating. We go in expecting the story yeah, look. of the guy who becomes... Straight up, level one gang member. Look at this mob character. He's such a jobber. I'm stronger solo, and what we're given in return is a plot that progresses like butter. The character is both relatable and understandable. Th this is not the same dude. Okay, what's this? What's this guy? The character is both. What the fuck are you talking about? What do you mean? <laughs> this is the guy that she told you not to worry about. Relatable and understandable, then art that's some of the best I've ever seen in any medium. Mm. Combine this with an underdog story that has you rooting heavily for the <sighs> protagonist, and what you get are the core ingredients to make just about any story successful. Underdog story. Oh, everyone like looks down on the main character. You're so weak, you know why? Everyone else is like this kind of magician, you know, this kind of warrior, you know, there's, there's rankings, but you're like the lowest. Why so weak? But then it turns out, psych, he's actually super OP and everyone's like, oh yes, give me this underdog story. It's when we start looking at solo leveling through the lens of what makes it a power fantasy though, that that's when we get to the elements that really make it shine. The progression of power is slow and methodic, the pacing quick and action intense, then the scale of conflict grows with respect to the level of power that the main character is at. That is an important thing. With respect to the level of power the main character is at. Because each arc, you can't just like, you, you, essentially you are repeating it, but it's like, how are you going to keep up this formula of this guy who's so OP that saves everyone but doesn't get boring? How are the enemies going to scale with his power so that it can feel like he's still has to struggle a little bit, something like that. It's like this exponential ramp in which you think he's reached his peak, then out of nowhere someone or something appears to prove otherwise. Mm. That's not to say those things are random or make no sense though, because the way one conflict flows into the next is actually quite smooth and fairly captivating. 
Okay. The story wastes no time going from, say, a dungeon to a raid and even hints at potential upcoming conflicts while doing so. Hey, that's that kid with the fancy armor from the trailer. Yeah, I remember him. So, each instance becomes more dangerous than the last and it's as they happen that the main character becomes more powerful through them. So, there's no point where our protagonist has suddenly become the strongest, because it's when you think he does that a new challenge arises to show that he hasn't. Okay. This is probably solo leveling's most enjoyable aspect as a whole, but it's before I touch more on how it's done that I think you should first know about the story now. Tell me. I've said enough about why I think it's good in general, but it's about time we delve into some of the themes and concepts we're dealing with. So, unlike most power fantasies I'm sure we're familiar with, this is neither an isekai nor a medieval fantasy, but instead just the modern world with fantasy video game elements intertwined into it. It's just modern world, but these like monsters exist. Okay, okay. Think dungeon-based encounters from Diablo, boss fights sure. as intense and menacing as in Dark Souls, then a guild system as comprehensive as Final Fantasy XIV's. Top it all off with a billion dollar global industry built around it like it's EVE Online, and that's pretty much solo leveling. So, it was about 10 years ago that portals known as gates would start appearing in- Now, this is a little bit dangerous, right? This is a little bit of spoilers, but maybe we can still watch. The real world. These gates would connect to what's known as dungeons, and these dungeons would be areas of another dimension typically containing hordes of monsters and a major boss leading them. They were pockets of chaos that would only close once that major boss was defeated. If it wasn't, then after seven days the dungeon would break and the monsters what? within would be set free into the real world. Now this is... It's episode one content, right? Like, it, it obviously is spoilers, but it's not even, like, heavy spoilers. And the way that Anius covers this show, so I, I trust him enough that, like, he won't just, like, reveal key, key, like, actual spoilers, right? This is just covering the world, just gives me more context to be appreciative of. Basically just, oh, fantasy world, you got these dungeons, these portals spawning, right? And then... You gotta just close it. You gotta go in, take out the mission, come out. But if you don't do it, monsters actually get set free into the world. That's actually pretty cool. It's a simple concept in which the stakes are set right from the get-go. Clear the dungeons or let literal demons massacre civilians. 100% there's gonna be moments where like, a gate opens, right? And it's like, we gotta, we gotta send our best men in there. But then it's like, oh no, our best squad got wiped out. Who can save the day? And it's like, Mr. Solo Leveling is here, send him in. It's gonna be some cool moments like that. Luckily, humans weren't left unequipped to deal with these dungeons because right around the time that they started appearing, so too did the existence of humans with powers. Okay. Magic which wasn't thought to have existed before suddenly started empowering people to the point that they could slay these monsters and demons. So people are just blessed with magic from the beginning. There's like, do you either have powers or you don't? These people would soon become known as hunters, and depending okay. on the level of power they were gifted with, a rank from E to S would be great. Okay, ranking system, nice! E, of course, being the weakest, and... We are 100% E rank here, right? I'd be honestly, I, we could be below E rank, bro. He probably doesn't even have fucking powers, look at him! S being this catch-all for those whose power can't even be measured anymore. Damn. So, naturally, our protagonist starts off at the E rank, but he's not just the weakest in terms the of weakest. classification. He's quite literally the weakest hunter ever. Of all mankind. I mean, we gotta start at the lowest point, right? Because if you want to hype this shit up, you gotta fucking start so low that the contrast between the beginning to whatever he becomes is so great. It becomes so hype. So much so that you couldn't even consider him very much stronger than a normal person. The reason he still risks his life anyway is because his mother is, he heroic? is sick and he needs the money to pay her medical bills. Capitalism. Gotta risk your fucking life slaying these dungeons so you can pay medical bills for your mom. That's fucked. So, to him, he has no choice but to do these raids. It's when he's on one that turns out to be harder than expected that both mm. him and his party get wiped because of it. A double layer extent. So this is the face we keep seeing time after time, right? In, every tra in most trailers. This guy, this creepy ass smile is shown every time. I can't wait to see what this is really about. Ending the dungeon beyond what it was thought to be takes him right to Anorlando where Sma and Ornstein are waiting for him. The fight goes just about as well as mine did, and it- So, this is kind of like, you know, in Ari Furetsa where like, um, well, maybe this isn't the same thing, but you know how we like, you know how a fucking Daisuke was fucking around with the gems and they, get, they, get, they, they fuck up, then they get teleported to like a deepest layer and it's like, oh shit, we should not be here kind of deal, something like that. It's right as the finishing blow was about to be delivered that a secret quest would reveal itself as completed. You have met all the requirements to complete the secret quest. 
courage of the week, and this is what makes him stronger. Somehow saving Song Jinu from his imminent demise, and at the it's a Chris Korean pronunciation there was pretty good. Same time bringing him into the system, which now allows him to level. Everything after seems like it's totally normal again, but okay. it's this ability to level up that changes everything. Because again, the Korean literal translation of this show is "na honja level up," which is literally only I level up. He unlocks a level up system. Reason being that raise the stats. Okay. Hunters aren't supposed to be able to get stronger. Okay, so no one else can level up but this guy. So everyone is already just busted. They get the power and they're just there. They're just immediately boom. You're here. You're not gonna change. You're not gonna up and down. You're at S rank. That's all it is. But our main character is like, no, it's a limitless growth. Fuck you. I'm just gonna keep growing. I'm just gonna keep leveling. What's yeah, that, their power? Wait, yeah, that that is Aizen right there. <laughs> what the fuck? Right away, right away. That is Aizen. To get stronger. I think this is a fire user from the trailer, right? I think this is the fire user, and this guy I think is like. The uh, the big like melee like, brawler guy from the trailer. Once their power is gained, yeah, there's like nothing this. more that can be done to change it. So for Sung Jin Woo to be able to complete quests and subsequently gain XP, skills, and okay. rewards, well, that's an ability that makes him quite the anomaly. Eventually attracting the attention of guilds across the world and so on and so forth as he continually makes himself stronger. Damn, everybody now, wants him. Leveling to become stronger definitely isn't a concept that we've never seen before, but what I think separates it from all the others is that slow methodical grind in which Sung Jin Woo becomes more powerful. He doesn't just magically become OP off screen or through some brief montage of training, but is instead constantly growing with each quest he completes and every boss he defeats. Okay, so scaling is good. personally invested in his growth as a character and are constantly anticipating what new heights he's gonna achieve next. So like every new arc, you know, it's like a slow build up. He gets new powers a little bit here and there. It's not like immediately, boom, you get all this shit immediately. Well, maybe there is like an initial jump, but like it's like a slow grind. And the pacing is good to the point where you don't feel like this power scaling is getting out of hand. The suspense doesn't just stop with that though, because this intriguing world of guilds and hunters brings with it a diverse cast of characters you can either root for or really, really despise a lot. Looks like a piece Both of shit. Both of which lead to these situations in which Sung Jin Woo can unveil his power in the most spectacular way possible. These characters certainly aren't developed to the same level Sung Jin Woo is at, but if you've ever watched my videos Jibril. on Foxes and Isekai before, You'd know I'm a sucker for those moments when the protagonist showcases their power to those- What is this anime? What, what, what is this anime, guys? Guys, we gotta watch this anime. This looks pretty fun. Look, look, look. That's a bunch of guys swinging at the guy. He's just sitting there. He's just like, yep, do all your hits. We gotta watch it. What is- is this a sale? This is- oh, this is a sale? Shit, I kinda wanna watch it now. ...faces their power to those who <laughs> underestimate him. And with solo leveling, there's that in spades. It never seems to get repetitive though, because the situations in which they happen are all different enough to the point that they feel unique and warranted. They're these climactic peaks that you know the story is leading to, but still can't wait to see due to how gratifying they are. Yeah, just like straight up like One Punch Man or like Eminence in Shadow, like yeah, I'm Atomic is coming. You know, Saitama's gonna show up and just punch. You know it's coming, but it's still so hype. It just depends on how you execute it, right? Some shows fail because they don't know how to maintain this power scaling. And some shows understand exactly how to execute and people feel gratifying, even though you're repeating the same thing over and over again in each arc. Each arc is the same fucking concept. Something is super OP comes out of nowhere. The world's in danger. What do you do? You send in a bunch of B-class heroes. Because the A-class hero is busy, and then the B-class heroes fail, and then the A-class heroes go in, and they all fail. And then what happens, and then the, the, the actual main character shows up and saves everyone, it's, but it's still so hype. It's still so hype. I won't spoil any of the situations in which they happen, good, but good. trust me when I say that they're some of the most satisfying flexes you'll ever- I need those satisfying flexes, and I, I love this shit. Whenever you have, like, I, and it's not specific to weapons or enemies, but, like, main characters or, like, anime characters with their eyes glowing like this, how they, like, turn around, so it's, like, like lightning effect. I love that shit. For have the pleasure of experiencing, a lot of which I'm excited to see finally get animated. I don't know if it's because of the slow grind he's taken that's led him up to this point, but there's no doubt that when he finally gets there, Look at this. you'll know he's earned it because you've seen him work his ass off to do so. How many episodes will solo leveling be? I hope it's like 24 episodes or something, but if it's like only 12 episodes, can there be enough episodes to actually get these hype moments? Because like, I feel like some shows are like a very slow burn to start off, so like, you might not get the good shit in season 1 if the pacing is off. 
So that's more of a point that I'm personally fond of, but if you're someone who's more into world building and the overall plot, I think you'll find the development of the world just as exciting. We probably won't see too much of it in season one of the anime, but no! as the stakes get higher and Sung Janu gets stronger, so too does the involvement of people and organizations from- What is this fucking One Punch Man training? What is he doing? He's just running? He's just doing push- This is the solo leveling part? <laughs> Wait, what, what's he doing here? He's just doing sit up for levels? People and organizations from across the world. What starts off as a story isolated to Korea quickly expands into this global affair involving guilds and hunters worldwide. Nationally? I know. So if it's Korea, we're using actual countries that exist in the world. So you could have like hunters from like Japan. You can have like hunters from like China, you know, like other like Asian countries too. Stuff like that. America, fuck it. Maybe you have like a big like fucking hog, like some big American dude. <laughs> You know, like, okay, okay. But that's probably like super into the end game if we're going to like a national level. You no, know, sometimes that can make the plot convoluted or hard to follow, but here it actually serves as a way to ensure Sung Jinu's power scaling is balanced. What I mean is that every time we think Sung Jinu has reached his peak, nah, someone or something is introduced to raise the bar higher. Bringing us back to that point that I'd mentioned earlier, there will always be a new target propelling him forward. He just completed a difficult raid, Cool. Here's an even harder red gate with even stronger monsters. Okay, just okay. That? Nice. More. Now you've got the attention of nation level hunters. It's this constant nation level hunters. Of the world around him, all of which is a direct result of the effort he's put in. It's almost like you yourself are unlocking parts of the world while reading, since you're pretty much with Sung Jin Woo every step of the leveling process. Now, I haven't even gotten started on Sung Jin Woo's epic powers, but don't that's something don't, I feel don't, you don't spoil it. For yourself yeah, don't anime. spoil that. Don't spoil I that. I could also praise the amazing art solo leveling is drawn with, but I'm sure the clips I've used here are more than enough to get my points across. So, what I'll talk about instead is what you could potentially expect from the anime coming out in January. Okay. Personally, my dream was for Ufotable to give this the animation it deserves, oh. but I think A1 Pictures and Aniplex might be just as capable. Ufotable animation is insane. It's like movie tier animation. Ufotable solo leveling would be crazy, but I'm based off what we've seen in the trailers, like it looks fine, like, right? I think it's gonna be completely fine. Sure, we might not get animation as fluid as Demon Slayer or Fate, but I've never complained about the quality of SAO either. Combine this with a soundtrack done by the legendary Hiro Hiro Kisano, Kisano, and yeah, already yeah. Already that's two core components we know are gonna be handled well. That's the Attack on soundtrack guy. I mean, he's not just the Attack on Titan, but everything around this is coming up really nice. As long as Toho is not publishing it, we Gucci. Please let Karakawa, someone else do it, not Toho, please. Where I do have a bit of hesitation, though, is the speed at which- Okay, that armor is fucking crazy. What is this shit, bro? What is this girl fan service? This is for the ladies, right? This is not for us. hesitation, though, is- <laughs> This is for the ladies right here. <laughs> the nipples are right over here, but you can barely see it, dude. This is more shameless than Asian Bunny X on Twitch right now, bro. What are you talking about? Look at this under boob. This fucking slut. It's the speed at which they're going to adapt the story. Remember, the fast pacing is something I mentioned solo leveling does well in the manhwa, but I fear the condensed nature of anime might make that a little bit too quick. With the director and series compositor without notable anime for either position, it's hard to say how it is they may choose to adapt this since there aren't really any anime we can compare it to. Hmm. The most I can do to figure out how the pacing may be is look at the scenes that we were shown in the trailers. There's a few characters here who don't show up till much, much later, so oh? either solo leveling is getting a multi-core season or we might actually be condensing the story even more than the webcomic does. Please give me two cores. But not only two cores, I want each core to be 24 episodes. Now, that's asking way too much, right? Two cores is probably going to be like 12 episode seasons at max, right? It's going to be like 12 here, and then four months later, we're going to have, you know, 12 coming back. Just like Mushoku Tensei. But can you imagine, bro? If could you... Like, this can't be just 12 episode season, bro. We need more. Like, please just do two cores. I'll wait. I'll fucking wait. Or just do back-to-back. -back. Fuck it. Just, just spoil us. Give us back-to-back -back 24 episodes. Yes. Either way, I'm just super excited to see my favorite manhwa finally become an anime. And it's a show I'll be covering weekly regardless of how good or bad it is. I'm honestly just happy to watch my all-time favorite power fantasy. I'm sure plenty of you have read this as well, but if you haven't and are waiting for the anime, yeah. trust me when I say that you're in for a treat. Yeah. This is honestly an isekai fanatic's fantasy. Yes! It may not be an isekai itself, but the tropes it borrows from the whole OP protagonist thing are executed both perfectly and repeatedly. So, oh God, yeah, please. that's the rundown on what solo leveling is.
I hope you're all just as excited as I am, and I hope to see you back here again when I make my future videos. Absolutely. If Absolutely. New, consider subscribing to know exactly when the- Y'all know exactly what to do. Go to his channel, sub to any news, like his videos. Goddamn. Solo leveling has been anticipated for a long time. This is a show that's had so many fucking choices. I can't even count how many times it's been. And now it's going to come out in a month. We will watch it in this channel. And goddamn, it is sounding so hype.